first of all, thanks to uh, a lot of the readers who sent in yeah. pieces of JFK documents and 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 flagged for me uh, different. You know, uh, hey, check check this out. Search this. Here's the document number. It was um, really helpful. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, you you guys you guys did your homework assignment. You you did it well. So we ha we have another segment. If we can put E1 here, uh, the CIA really has long claimed that it had no contact with Lee Harvey Oswald before President Kennedy's assassination. But that claim is undercut by a new document released last week by the Biden administration, which involves George DeMarinchilt, who's a known CIA asset. Now, it's long been known that the two became close friends in the months before the assassination, but skeptics have called that a coincidence. But in spring 1963, DeMarinchilt traveled to New York, Philadelphia, and Washington. According to the documents found in the newly declassified files, at the same time as his trip, the CIA's Domestic Operations Division ran a search on DeMorenschild, quote, exact reason unknown, according to these documents created by a CIA analyst included in last week's declassification. Now, we talked about those documents briefly last week, and we can put up E2 here, uh, but didn't have time to dive into their significance, but now we can. So I talked to Jeff Morley, who runs a substack, JFK Facts, and he noted that it was known that Oswald had told DeMore and Schilt he'd soon be traveling to New Orleans. Oswald's time in New Orleans is critical to understanding how a conspiracy may have unfolded, and there's a reason why it was Jim Garrison, the New Orleans district attorney, who later tried to prove the conspiracy in court, which later turned into Oliver Stone's drama JFK, which itself led to the JFK Records Act of 1992, which is the law under which Biden released these documents. Now, it's also worth knowing that the covert arm of the division mentioned in this memo was run at the time by E. Howard Hunt, a black ops specialist who actually confessed, and put that, we can put this element in the Rolling Stone article, he confessed later in life to learning ahead of time of a conspiracy to assassinate Kennedy that involved high-level figures in the CIA. So the CIA memo reads, we can put up this next element, it is interesting that Gail Allen's interest in, the, in De Morinshield uh, De coincided with the earlier portion of this trip. The memo concludes referring to Gail Allen as a case officer with the CIA's Domestic Operations Division at the time. And the information would suggest that possibly Allen and De Morinshield were were possibly in the same environment in Washington, D.C., circa April 26, 1963. So that's a critical new detail to add to this puzzle. And this week, Tucker Carlson's Fox News show added another piece of the puzzle. Let's roll that. We spoke to someone who had access to these still hidden CIA documents, a person who was deeply familiar with what they contain. We asked this person directly, did the CIA have a hand in the murder of John F. Kennedy, an American president? And here's the reply we received verbatim, quote, the answer is yes. I believe they were involved. It's a whole different country from what we thought it was. It's all fake. It's hard to imagine a more jarring response than that. Again, this is not a, quote, conspiracy theorist that we spoke to, not even close. This is someone with direct knowledge of the information that once again is being withheld from the American public. And the answer we received was unequivocal. Yes, the CIA was involved in the assassination of the president. And so, Emily, why, why this new clue is so interesting is that there's been a lot of questions about who did Oswald talk to in New Orleans? Mm -hmm. You know, how did he how did did he interact with CIA assets? Is this is this where he was kind of roped into this this November plot? Uh, and na now, if it's the case that this CIA asset, Demoren Chilt, went to Washington and hung out with uh, CIA people, uh, that would that would make the link. That would explain how the CIA would have known that there was this, fig this interesting figure of Oswald who's going to New Orleans over the, over the summer. And because why, like, why else would the DOD, the e. e. Howard Hunt's division, uh, be, be running this search if, they, if there wasn't some interaction between people in the DOD? And, and actually last week when I, was, when I was reading this document, I thought DOD was uh, Pentagon as, you know, it's a reasonable assumption, <laughs> but no, it's Domestic Operations Division, uh, which itself is an extraordinarily controversial uh, operation because the CIA should not have domestic a Domestic Operations, operations <laughs> Division, and they certainly shouldn't have a goon like Howard Hunt running it, this, who la later became the Watergate, Watergate guy, but before confessing on his uh, what he thought was his deathbed to uh, knowledge of this conspiracy. There's a great line in your story for The Intercept where you say, Oswald's 
uh, next few years make more sense with a CIA connection right. than without yeah. it. They make much more sense with a CIA connection than without it. And I think this new evidence suggests um, that the CIA connection in and of itself makes much more sense now, that there's just much more, um, it's, it's becoming a much clearer picture. His relationship with the CIA is becoming a much clearer picture, which is an enormously helpful thing uh, to have from our vantage point now decades and decades in the past. And the Tucker segment is interesting too, because it's like the Hunt article in Rolling Stone that you pointed to. The dam has to break, right? Like the facade at some point, you just see these little cracks where they're not little cracks, they're actually huge cracks where people come out and say, yeah, hey, you know, but it's one person, right? And then the CIA shuts it down and you get it, someone talks to Tucker, someone says they themselves had knowledge of this, um, but it's still, right? Like mm -hmm. the government still doesn't tell the, the full story. So you can still just sort of dismiss that. And right. And so the big question is, what evidence remains in these files? And, and uh, one, you know, the person who would know that is somebody who has run the CIA before. And so let's roll a, a second part of this, uh, of this Tucker segment. And people have known this for a long time. The people who knew would include every director of the CIA since November of 1963. And that list would include Obama's CIA director, John Brennan, one of the most sinister and dishonest figures in American life. That list would also include, we are sad to say, our friend Mike Pompeo, who ran the CIA in the last administration. Mike Pompeo knew this. We asked Pompeo to join us tonight, and though he rarely turns down a televised interview, he refused to come. We hope he will reconsider. It's just such an effective barb. It's <laughs> subtle, but poignant, you know, even though he rarely turns down a televised interview. Right, hey, hey Mike, you wanna come on to the Tucker Show? Yeah, absolutely, what are we talking about, uh, JFK? Yeah, no. Mm. <laughs> Wow, yeah, really just slammed tonight, can't, can't make it. The big, the big picture question, I think, um, I mean, obviously there's a, a huge question about our involvement historically in world affairs that this, this is, and in domestic affairs, <laughs> to your point about the DOD, that this case uh, reflects. But in terms of implicating Mike Pompeo, it does raise a really inter interesting question, which is, how are these things still functioning? How are all of these mechanisms that we like to pretend and hide were not functioning the way that it seems very clear? I mean, again, this is from the memo that you, you plucked from this new stack, Ryan. It says, Shep phoned to say that James Wilcott, a finance clerk with the agency from 57 who served in Tokyo 60 to October 64, has told HSCA people that CIA hired Lee Harvey Oswald when Oswald served in Atsugi. Mm -hmm. Atsugi, a Japanese naval base, which may have been uh, your grandfather's. Uh, base. I, know, I have we're, no idea. We gotta, but, <laughs> but he served in Japan. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Um, but you you say that this overlaps, or, or you, this is interesting because it overlaps with uh, a lot of your work on drug policy mm -hmm. and with the United States military's record on drug policy, um, because he Oswald is then part of that program. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, he may have been, and there are people who suspect that he was, and this tightens the link. There were two things going on uh, at, at this CIA uh, base. It was, it was both a naval base and a CIA base that are of importance. One, it was a CIA base because they were launching U-2 spy planes right. over the Soviet Union. Two, it was a a, a central component of the CIA's experimentation with psychedelics, with, yes. with LSD in particular. Right. And so, uh, you know, did, did, did Oswald participate in this? We don't, you know, we, we, we don't know for certain. Uh, but l like you were saying, everything he does after this makes more sense if he did make a CIA link at this point. So he goes from there uh, to a base in California where he uh, appears to have then through uh, a, a joint kind of, uh, intelligence and military school in Monterey learns Russian. Mm -hmm. uh, he mm -hmm. then gets a completely bogus discharge uh, where he claims that his mother uh, is ill. That turns out that that, that wasn't true. Uh, but if you're moving into kind of agency work, covert agency work, often you can get a facilitated bogus discharge. Yeah. Uh, so he gets this dischar discharge. He then, within nine days of getting his discharge, with $203 in his bank account, he sails for England. Uh, his wife later tells, I think, the Warren Commission that he took a hop, which is a military, basically a military flight from England over to Helsinki in Finland. With his $203 you know, bank account, he then stays in two of the fanciest hotels in Helsinki before having enough money to then book a uh, overnight train to Moscow, right. where he then shows up at the American <laughs> embassy and announces that he 
has uh, flipped, and he's he's becoming a, a follower of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. um, and the embassy staff later said that his entire speech sounded weird and rehearsed. Uh, and so then he spends the next two and a half years in the Soviet Union um, as as this defector, and then comes back. Yeah, just it's cool. Come on back. Yeah, moves goes winds up you know Mexico then Dallas, uh, where he uh, then but is befriended by the CIA asset, who, yes. who then the CIA asset uh, travels um, up to, after learning he's going to New Orleans, travels up to Washington. In Washington, uh, E. Howard Hunt's division, run, who reported right up to Alan Dulles, runs a search on this guy's name. They make connections, uh, connections are made with, with Oswald in New Orleans, and then Oswald in November 1963 is somehow involved with this assassination. We don't know it, it's you know we, we don't we don't know you know precisely how what his what his what his role was. Warren Commission says he uh, was the lone gunman, who gunned him down. If but if you were if you were to concoct some type of conspiracy, you'd want a guy like this, who would uh, take the fall for it to be at the scene. Uh, right before he's killed by Jack Ruby, he's telling the press, "I'm a patsy. I'm a patsy. I'm a patsy." Yeah. And this, again, the, the document that you flag here is, uh, just r creates a clearer picture of, of how that could have been the case. It's plausible. So here's some more uh, JFK declassification files because they push people out of the woodwork uh, like Tucker's source, and uh, you get closer and closer yeah. to the truth. And the reason Pompeo was mentioned is in 2017 was a year that they were supposed to release a lot of documents. They released some. Pompeo fought internally extraordinarily hard. Uh, against basically people like Roger Stone, who had Trump's ear on the other side, saying, release this stuff, man. Right. Um, but you have to put yourself in the perspective of the of a, an American president who d isn't sure but believes that the CIA may have done this to Kennedy. And then you start wondering yourself, well, if they, and that is what is so transformative about this act, whether they even did it or not, the fact that so that presidents since then have believed that they did it, mm -hmm. and if and there's a great art article about Richard Nixon in Politico years ago, uh, Nixon co completely believed that the CIA did this and pre and, pre and basically yes. pressed the helms at the CIA, to s saying I if if you don't protect me around Watergate, I'm going to expose your hanky panky with the Kennedy and the Bay of Pigs and and w what all happened there. Who sh as as Rich as Richard Nixon said, who shot John? The mm -hmm. whole who shot you you want to go into the who shot John question? That's mm -hmm. that's Nixon kind of. Uh, you know, uh, blackmailing the CIA. But that's a, another point as to why they're so sensitive about these records. I mean, there are a million reasons, of course, but there are, are so many other people that could be implicated whose names aren't involved yet, and it could be tangentially through things like that, like the mm -hmm. soft blackmail from Richard right. Nixon about, quote, who shot John. Um, so there's some things that have sort of seeped through the cracks over the years that are tangential or implicate people that are, are randomly involved, whatever, someone knew this, someone knew that. Um, but we, I mean, you don't know what you don't know. Right. Um, and so that's the, the big lingering question mark. Uh, what we do know is that there are a lot of things we don't know, right. and we continue to fill in the the sort of lines as best we can, but um, the the Mike Pompeo angle is a, a really interesting one. It reminds me of Pompeo and Trump's disagreements over Assange um, that ultimately Pompeo won out on. Mm -hmm. You can understand where hawkish sort of conservatives and, and Democrats even like Pompeo would come down on that question and say this utterly you know will obliterate the credibility of the United States on the world stage if if it gets out it's not worth it et cetera et cetera um, but obviously the American people uh, deserve to know how their money is being spent in uh, heinous ways like this yeah and uh, same invitation to Mike Pompeo welcome to come on counterpoints anytime absolutely and talk about this um, uh, oh and uh, the Warren Commission run by Alan Dulles <laughs> he that loves Alan I'm, I'm concerned. <laughs> hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.